What's up, Rod Nutrition, IBPPRO Brett Wilkin here, and today I'm gonna show you how to build your back. I am currently 13 weeks out for my open debut at the Olympia. So today, I wanna show you exactly how I break down training my back because I don't think enough people are learned how to properly train their back in different areas. So it's gonna be all about exercise selection because the back is such a wide area, it's such a big body part. You have upper, mid, and lower. You have your terrace majors and minors on the side. It's just a big surface area that a lot of people are missing. So you wanna make sure you're setting up your training, your exercise selection, that you're hitting each area. And I'm gonna show you how to do that with these perfect exercises prescribed. On exercise one here so like I said explain we want to make sure that we're hitting all areas of the back so I always start with some kind of lat movement first um, because you want to get a lot of blood in those lats usually people's lats are what's lacking the most so you want to train the body parts or the areas that you're weakest to grow them the most at the beginning of your workout so we're gonna do some isolated single arm lat pull downs here I'm setting up this new machine just because I haven't tried it yet it fell awesome so we're running it today but I'm setting it up in a path that your single arm is just pulling through and controlling with the lat. So you want to situate your body that you're only purely using your lat. I do that by sitting a little sideways. I'm dropping my traps, taking my traps out of it and driving your elbow. So a lot of back training is just your elbow drive. So where it's finishing is what the area you're, you're working. So here's a low elbow drive. So we're working those low lats, those lats in general. We're gonna get a lot of blood in there. So think. Body steel, use an elbow drive to go past your body, squeeze in the back, take your traps out of it, and only use your lats on the side of your body. As we're rolling here, quick pro tip. So one thing you need to realize is the stretch is just as important as the contraction. So when I'm doing this, I'm controlling the negative. So the, the, the stretching portion of the movement, very controlled up, stopping about right when you, you know, activation of the lat. You don't need to let it go and let your shoulder go out of joint. This full stretch. And then when you're coming down, you're actually driving past your body. So your elbow is going past your body. You're not leaning back and turning. You want to stay forward and drive past your body. Because that's when your back fully takes over is when you actually are going past your body and all, all that's left is just your back. So good stretch, full contraction, control the movement back up. All right, here we go. Exercise number two. So now we're setting up. So like I said, now we want to hit a different area of the back. This one's actually the front area of your back. Is that a thing? But we're going to call it that. <laughs> so we're doing pullovers. You can do pullovers many different ways. You can do a cable setup what I'm going to do today. You can do dumbbell pullovers when you're on a bench. You can do machine pullovers that can actually do the movement for you and you just control it down and back up. But there's different angles you can do with these pullovers with different types of equipment. But what the pullovers do is they build your lats here on the front, on the side. So when you come out, you know, you see those guys, all the pictures from those crazy V tapers, those super wide lats, when they flex them down to a small waist, what builds those lats that kind of come swooping out, out and forward are pullovers because you're getting over it. You're working just these front parts of your lats and you're pinning it down. So not a lot of people know that. If you want to get really wide with your lats from the front, do a lot of pullovers, right? So today I'm doing a cable pullover. This is probably my favorite setup, especially here. because I can feel it the most. So go with what feels the best. Um, I'm using a mag grip. I, I did a video here on this YouTube before about the mag grip and how great it feels for this movement. So take a look here how I perform it. Because that mag grip just sets your elbows up where it should be. And so their elbows are slightly bent but fixed. And you're just controlling the weight and the cable down into your lap. And you control back up through a stretch all the way to the top. So watch how I set it up here. Watch how I'm loading my lats correctly. Keeping that tension on the lats the entire time. Um, and getting a little bit of a body swing there so you can pin it high bring it up your chest and then letting it stretch through. So watch how it's done and grow those lats wide in the front. <clears throat> Ooh. 
Another pro tip on the pullovers here. So the cable pullovers that we're doing. If you notice, I'm actually standing on the edge of this. Um, that's just because luckily it's a perfect distance, but there's a reason to it. So I want to actually elevate my heels. You don't have to, but this just helps you. Like I said, it's just a pro tip to make the exercise better. Um, so I've always noticed when I either I'm, like have my heels on a plate, you can put a little stand down, just something that's about an inch high, that's elevating your heels slightly. It forces you to have your weight over your toes and bending forward. I want that because you want to do a pullover where you're actually pulling through. You're going through the ground into your lap instead of just pulling into your chest. So I've seen a lot of people that are just doing pullovers where they get the cable and they're just pulling to their chest. Those are just rows. Those aren't actually the, the concept of a pullover, which is isolating those front lats and going out and away into your lap here. So set your body up in the right position by elevating your heels slightly. Like I said, usually use a plate here. We're lucky enough that this, this platform right here is right perfectly up against this cable unit, but you can do it yourself with just a plate. Elevate the heels, feel it more. One thing I always think in my head here is always tempo of your reps. So you want to actually like a two second stretch on each one with a one second contraction. So on this, I'm pinning it down one hard, holding the bottom for a quick second, and then back through with a two count. So you want your stretch, which is your eccentric portion, to be a, bit, a little bit slower, a little bit more controlled. Then your concentric is a little bit quicker and when you're pinning it through, or say you're pushing or squatting, it's that explosion out. Mm -hmm. So think that in your head. Two second stretch, one second you can check. So also with this is you want to be able to form that connection. So a lot of people might feel it in their triceps. So mess with your grip there. That's why I took my, you notice I said that the arms need to be slightly bent. Because if you're fixed, if you're just straight out, you're using a little bit more triceps. You bend your elbows a little bit to load the lats, engage them and flex them, and then just control it through that. And again, and it goes into body setup. Like I said, I was pinning down. I'm letting my, my body work with by stretch. I'm coming back through, bringing my chest through, using the lats. So it's a lot of trial and error on this kind of stuff. Mind muscle connection is a thing. So just keep on feeling the movement. Don't just throw a bunch of weight on there just to, just to do it. Don't ego lift. Be thinking about the movement, be making sure you're hitting the right areas before you advance in weight. All right, we are moving into the bread and butter now. So this is our third exercise. Like I said, I'm breaking this down to make sure that we're hitting all areas. First exercise was lat isolation. So we worked those low to mid lats on the sides with single arm movements. Then we moved into the pullovers, which was that front lat isolation as well. Thinking about getting wider up top on the lats with this, creating that V taper we wanna see. Now we get into the heavy stuff. That's gonna be more of the density, the thickeners. So this is for more for mass. This is gonna be your heavy rows. So we're gonna do some T-bar rows here. Just your traditional bent over T-bar rows um, with this setup here in the corner. Be conscious of, which I see a lot of people doing, is don't be cheating. This is something you can really cheat on, use a lot of leg movement. You see people that are kind of standing up and pulling. They're just using their traps and you see a lot of people that are using their legs to spring out of the bottom, which is using your legs instead of your back. I want you to set yourself up, slight knee beat, slight knees bent here, just like we did with our elbows last one. So, and then, the, Butt back, chest up, getting yourself in that perfect row spot. So all you can use is your back. Now you're thinking you're just driving your elbows past your midline again, as high as you can squeeze and control it back. So again, no bouncing, no swinging, no jumping. Just be strict as you can be. Fully isolate that back and build. This is gonna be your mid thickness. So this is gonna be your density. You get thick back with that turtle shell back. This is what does it right here.
exercise four of the back builder day today. And we are going to focus on upper back now. Again, hit, hit lats, hit front lats, hit mid back thickness, density there. Now we're going to work more of that trap area into your rear delts, just that upper back. So we've got to pick something that's going to set us up in that position. So we're going to use this prime machine here that's chest supported with an incline. I'm going to make it so you want to put your body in position that you're using your upper back. So I'm going to bring the seat down a little bit so I come down. And where I'm pulling, I'm going to bring my elbows out a little bit too. So think, I want to pull through my upper back. And that's how you do that is actually getting elbow bend and driving that way. So I'll be setting up, leaning over, driving through the top of my back, squeezing and controlling my back. This machine sets you in the right position. All you have to do is stay locked in, keep the chest down into the pad. Don't cheat and come off. And just keep on bringing those elbows back as far as you can. feeling good so we are four exercise deeps we have we just got done with those upper back rows so like I said we had the single isolation on the lats we had the pullovers for the front front lats we had the uh, bent over rows t-bar rows for mid back thickness upper back rows chest supported for that upper back thickness and so now we're just going to kind of finish up here we're going to do some assisted pull-ups so I like to do my pull-ups at the end of the workout because that's going to be when they're the hardest um, I like to do them assisted as well, uh, just because you can really focus on not so much the body swinging, but just driving through those lats. So this is a very specific movement that I'm not moving my body. I'm rolling my elbows forward, so I'm loading those lats. I'm pulling through. So not only do pull-ups work your lats, they also work your terrace major and minor on the side there. So that's what creates more width too. So this is more of a width exercise, if you want to call it that. So we got width now, and it also provides that stretch. So at the end of the workouts, I like to pick up some kind of movements that provide some kind of stretch. So we have a lot of blood pooled in there. We have a good pump going. So now we want to stretch it all out and spread it out. So this will be a great finisher for us. And we're just going to do pretty much three or four sets just to failure. So let's get after it. Hopefully they're not as hard as they look right now and have some fun. <laughs> All right, there we have it. So that is how I structure a perfect back day for growth. Remember, your legs and your back are your biggest body parts, made up of very big areas, surface areas. So make sure you're hitting each region. Make sure you're picking the right exercises to hit those muscles. And again, elbow drive is huge. So where you're ending with your elbows is gonna dictate which part of the back you're working. It's all about staying focused, staying in the movement, not cheating and executing properly. So try these out today, try these exercises out, try this more so the scheme out that you're hitting all areas of the back. Watch your back grow and let me know what you guys think. Till next time, thanks. <laughs>